Hey friends, I hope this finds you well. I know with the current pandemic, it's not much fun to be trapped in the house. So let's do something way fun and talk about an art palette. This is for the Paul Rubens watercolor set. This is a test paint and I chose to do a Marioshka. I hope I'm saying that right. My pronunciation for foreign words is not always the best. When I design my work, I typically do it inside my iPad, where I transfer sketches via photograph to um, my iPad Pro and I finish them out in like Adobe Draw. I haven't really been a fan of Fresco, but you know, I just use Adobe Draw and make them very linear, very neat. And so this is kind of my process. I'll print them out and then I'll take a light box and I trace them onto watercolor paper because I can't just do sketches on watercolor paper. I am way too messy for that. Oh my god, I am so messy. It's no good. So here is the Paul Rubens watercolor set. We reviewed it in our last video of this palette. And here is our drawing. So. The pigments were a little odd. Now part of me saying this is because I actually started with Holbein watercolors, which I will also do a review for, but I was really surprised at how hard it was to pick up the blue pigment for this piece. It didn't really want to come along. As you can see, there are splotches and spots where it did decide that it wanted to pick up better and it needed to go over. Now, I know the whole point of watercolors, from what I've been told, <laughs> is for you to use them kind of like really thin layers. I'm okay with that, I just felt like I didn't get a lot of pigment up for what I was trying to do, even for putting down a basic wash. It wasn't bad though. I think my beginning experience with this is difficult. But as you can see, the reds and warmer hues, they were highly pigmented and came up very easily. I did try to mix some of them for this as well, and I tried to go with a more muted green so that the red could stand out on its own. It, it kind of worked, but it kind of made it look like it was covered in moss at first. I will chalk that particular one up to my terrible mixing skills. Uh, one of the hard things about being an artist is you can always see where you're lacking in skills and what you need to keep working on. <laughs> so for this palette, once I had the basic green down, I decided to try one of the greens inside that were already pre-mixed, and the green was nice and vibrant, once again still struggling with that picking up what I felt was like enough pigment because it felt really light. It just, it, I felt like I had to do more. This is, of course, also after letting them set for a few minutes. I was pleased with their premixed version of Violet. It went down reasonably well. I was also pleased with their black, as I felt like it, it was nice and dark and bold. And once again, I'm showing off how the, how nice the yellows actually are. They dry incredibly transparent and are excellent for layering. So now I wanted to go back and start trying to breathe a little more life into these flowers. Uh, florals are not my specialty on any level. So I am working hard to learn how to do them better and how to make them more attractive. That is not on the paint. <laughs> they did, once I started applying other layers of color on top of what I had already done, they did start to really develop this nice rich coloring. Like it's just very deep and it feels luxurious. I don't know. I was really impressed with the reds in this uh, particular set. And there's me mixing on my side palette, <laughs> trying to war with a skin tone. Now skin tones are kind of one of those weird places for me. I'm not always sure if I'm picking a dark enough one or a light enough one for whatever type of skin I'm doing. I decided to go for more of a Caucasian skin. I think it came out reasonably well. And then when it was layered with, a, you know, the red for the blushy cheeks that I kind of wanted to achieve, I felt like it did a nice job of the pigments going into each other. 
So then I'm gonna touch up that black because I believe in black lines. Don't care what professional watercolor artists say. I think life is only better when you have a little bit of black. All right, I felt like the skin was good enough. And I started going back and putting in the black eyes. And I felt like that actually did a really nice job of helping it feel more finished, at least for the face. Because before I felt like the face was kind of everywhere. I struggle with the letting colors run into each other part of watercolor. <laughs> but yeah, I felt like that did a good job of finishing the face. I went back and I started adding little shadows, trying to make it feel like the face was surrounded by fabric rather than just kind of like uh, one of those one of those funny photography things where you stick your head through and they take a picture and your body's different. <laughs> I'm going back and I'm touching up the yellow again. And it was around this time that I realized uh, the stamen that I had intended to leave white. I had been so distracted by the color of the body with it being such a strange moss green and not being happy with it that I realized I was going to have to go back and try to help them stand out. So I thought to use only the materials I had first, and so I only used the yellow to try to pull them out. Now unfortunately because green is made up from yellow, it just, it kind of made it look like it was bleached. So my next idea was to turn around and use some Holbein gouache. I originally was just going to keep this within the palette that I was using, but I realized that it's more valuable to know if it will mix with your other daily uses. And I tend to use the Holbein white gouache for the intent and purpose of when I need something to stand out. You can add it, use it to add tiny highlights and without it looking unnatural. I still haven't mastered that yet. And then I realized also, you know what, I'm going to try this white color watercolor pencil as well to give them the sort of thickness I want. And I think at that point I was finally satisfied and I felt more like I could continue on with I also had this idea of wanting to see what would happen if I used the watercolor pencil over top of the um, cheek bones where I would normally put white highlights and I think that came out okay. It's not very defined. So I also decided I wanted to layer on top some gold ink. Um, this has a really nice shine to it, and I've been really obsessed with uh, artwork lately that uh, artists take to layering with a little bit of extra sparkle to it. I swear, I'm probably the most girly person when it comes to my paint. I want it to sparkle! But uh, everything else, I'm like, nah, nah, fuck it, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm a little more of a tomboy. <laughs> but I thought it would be cool to do it with the stamen of this flower. And once I was done there, I realized, you know what? I used that over white. I wonder what it looks like over yellow. Because typically a lot of artists layer their sparkly colors over a, a pigment of the same color. So I decided to try that over on the yellow trim, but I didn't really see any huge difference between the two. So finally, I'm doing a little bit of inking. Inking on watercolor is kind of weird. Depending on the watercolor that you have, sometimes it feels a little grainy. Sometimes it glides on very nicely. And then when you put this over gold ink, uh, this is Kuretake gold ink, it has a weird, almost sandy texture. However, I think it went on top well on top of the Paul Rubens watercolors. What might have been interesting to ink a little and to do a watercolor wash over it to see what it would do, but I was very interested in making a nice final piece and to do it with how I typically manage my watercolors. If there are other tests you think that you would like to see just as a sidebar. We know these pigments do this when they go over the black or whatever. Let me know in the comments below. I would be interested to see what you would find more helpful when deciding whether or not this palette is good for you. So in short, I think that this palette is all right. It's not my favorite. I think I still prefer my Holbein and 
Daniel Smith watercolors to Paul Rubens, but I think Paul Rubens would be an excellent starter place for someone who is learning about colors and whether or not they want to mix them. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I will continue to try to put videos out on a more regular basis. We've just moved, so we'll tell you all about that in our next upcoming video. Thanks. Bye.